poverty in the small Southeast Asian country of Laos remains at catastrophic levels. Fully 40% of its children are stunted, malnutrition, meaning they don't grow properly. But the country does have one trump card. Its mountains and rivers are ideal for dams, producing energy to be sold to power-hungry neighbors like Thailand. Critics claim these dams will block fish migration and affect millions of people who depend on the rivers to survive. I'm Veronica Pedroza. On this edition of 101 East, we ask if dams in Laos can lift a country from poverty or leave its people hungry. One of the world's great rivers, the Mekong, flows through six countries, including Laos. 60 million people rely on it for food and their livelihoods. But Laos is seeking to become the battery of Southeast Asia. It wants to build eight hydroelectric projects on the Mekong and another 50 on its tributaries. Some experts warn such schemes could cause massive environmental damage. But the government seems determined to press ahead. Wayne Hay reports. Our government, as well as uh, our people, uh, need to develop uh, the economic growth. It's not a simple question of yes or no, it's not a black or white issue. Building any dams on the Mekong River's mainstream will seriously affect the fishery. The mighty Mekong River is at its most powerful in southern Laos. It's an awesome sight and it's scenes like these that are generating what is increasingly becoming a heated debate. Before arriving here at the Khon Falls, this mass of water formed on the Tibetan Plateau has barged its way through China and down a long path splitting Thailand and Laos. At the height of the wet season, the river's personality changes, particularly here. This raw energy is exactly what is exciting the Lao government. The power brokers of this landlocked and financially poor nation see this as liquid cash just waiting to be tapped. They plan to achieve that by building dams on the main stream of the river with the aim of generating enough hydroelectricity to export to neighboring countries, particularly Thailand, as it tries to realize its goal of becoming the battery of Southeast Asia. Opponents say the dams will have a huge impact on what is the largest inland fishery in the world, home to more than 1,300 different species. The Mekong River is what is the most productive fishery in the entire world, and essentially it feeds the Mekong region. Building dams on the Mekong mainstream would block the large fish migrations that are important for the life cycles of these fish, and so therefore it would undermine regional food security. In fact, commercial fishing in the Mekong Basin is worth $2 billion a year, contributing about 2% of the world's fish catch. 70% of the commercial catch are migratory fish, and that's of particular concern in southern Laos. The Hu Sahong Channel, just north of the Cambodian border, is where the government is hoping to build its first mainstream dam, the Don Sahong. In this part of the country, the river is split into many channels, divided by some 4,000 islands, which are inhabited by around 60,000 people. Their main income is earned from farming and fishing, which in the wet season is a particularly hazardous occupation. The fishermen construct bamboo ramps in the main flow of the river, catching whatever happens to swim in that direction. To retrieve the catch takes a fair amount of courage and plenty of knowledge of the river. Because many neighboring channels are dominated by waterfalls, Hu Sahong is one of the only places in this part of the river where fish can swim upstream. In fact, at times over the years, the government has viewed it as so important to several species that it banned fishing there. Now it's planning to dam the channel, but not, it says, before a full impact assessment is carried out. This uh, issue we also study by using the fishery specialist. And if the, special, uh, the fishery specialist uh, say that the impact is very important, then the government also uh, stop to develop that project. 
It seems eventually they will forge ahead with their plans, though, which critics say would be a disaster for the fishing industry and food security in the region. The Lao government has set itself a target of building eight dams on the main stream of the Mekong. And including projects on the tributaries, a total of 60 hydropower stations. The latest of which is due to begin operating early next year. The Nam Tun Tu Dam was partly funded by the World Bank and the Asian Development Bank. ADB's mission is to help member nations reduce poverty, and it says Laos needs the money hydropower can earn them. Almost 30% of the country's 6.5 million people make less than a dollar a day. But the bank admits building on a tributary is one thing, and it's not about to leap in to help the government with a project on the mainstream. We are encouraging the government uh, to look at uh, some significant potential impact uh, from mainstream them. And uh, we understand the government also appreciate uh, the significant uh, potential impact from this mainstream them. Downstream of Nam Tun Tu, the locals seem to have become accustomed to their new, rather imposing neighbor. Fishing carries on in a new pool under the watchful eye of power station employees while upstream a large part of the Nakai Plateau, where people once lived, is now an eerie land of semi-submerged trees. The reservoir created meant 16 villages had to be relocated. When the local authorities came to let us know the situation, they told me the area would be flooded, so I was scared and thought I have to move. Still, she told us she's happy with her new house, said the government has also provided them with land to grow crops. Down south, the proposed Don Sahong project would be a run-of-river dam, meaning a large reservoir wouldn't be needed. Even so, three villages on the surrounding islands will be affected. One fisherman we met told us officials have already visited the local people to educate them about the project. He says while the fishing may suffer, he's hoping the communist government will share the wealth generated by the power station. Our families have been fishing here for generations and our living conditions haven't improved. We only earn a little bit of money and we get nothing from the government. Maybe that will change if the dam is built. There are big question marks over whether that will happen though. Laos is one of the most corrupt nations in the world and seems to be aggressively pursuing foreign investment. The fear is the secretive government is simply selling off its section of the Mekong to the highest bidder as it attempts to rid itself of poverty by 2020. Caught in the middle of the debate is the Mekong River Commission. It's an intergovernmental agency charged with managing the resources of the river. It's currently working on an environmental assessment of damming the mainstream. It says Laos must consult with fellow member nations, Vietnam, Thailand and Cambodia, before a project can start. This issue is fully out in the public domain and it's going to take place in a, in a much more open environment than maybe would have, taken, uh, would have happened maybe uh, 20 or 30 years ago. So I think that the situation is, is quite different and I'm quite confident that uh, uh, this open discussion will take place. The Mekong touches everyone in this country. At a restaurant in the capital, Vientiane, Pope sings about the river every evening. Her song is about a woman who knows the setting sun means it's time to go home. But she wants to stay with the river and watch the fish swim up and down. Laos is in desperate need of income from somewhere. The debate will continue for some time whether tampering with one of the world's great natural wonders is the right channel to go down. The government seems convinced that it is.
right, well, to discuss the issue of dams in Laos, I'm joined in Bangkok by World Bank Country Manager for Laos, Pachamutu Ilangovan, and by environmental scientist Carl Middleton from the Human Rights and Environment Group, International Rivers. Gentlemen, thank you both very much indeed for joining me. I'm going to begin with you, Carl Middleton. We heard that view expressed in the report by Wayne Hay just then of a villager there hoping that there will be more uh, dam projects. People in Laos are hoping there will be more. It's not a new idea. The debate's been raging for more than a decade. Everyone acknowledges that there is going to be a social and environmental uh, impact. But the idea here is that all those concerns have been taken into account. And this is a project that serves the development of Laos as a country, as a people, for the long-term future. Um, well. I think we should start by looking at the track record of hydropower development in Laos. And in almost all projects developed to date, people have been left, left worse off after the projects than before them. It's a question of who benefits from these projects and who pays the cost. And it's often local communities that lose access to their land and access to their fisheries who pay the cost for the projects, whilst it's the electricity consumers in the development countries that ben benefit from them. But at the same time, if people aren't able to provide a sustainable livelihood for themselves, and that's entirely unproved in the case of the Nam Turn 2 project, then we can't call that good development. Let me put that to Pachamutu Ilangova, and also joining us from Bangkok. This is a really significant project for the World Bank. I mean, it's the first time in years uh, it's funded a dam because they are so controversial. But that has been outweighed by selling this particular project as a potential model of responsible hydropower development, a vehicle, so they say, to reduce poverty. Carl Middleton has a good point. What proof do you really have that the people living nearby are going to have sustainable livelihoods in the future? Well, thank you for that uh, question, Veronica, and thank you for having me on the show. I mean, Nam Thun Tool, I mean, has been in the planning process for a long time, mm -hmm. and uh, it's been under implementation now for nearly five years. As uh, your correspondents or your reporters have pointed out, uh, people in that area have already started enjoying a higher level of quality of life than what they had before. And obviously, we, ha we recognize uh, livelihoods development, in, even in any rural setting, anywhere in the world, is a very challenging proposition. And what we are confident is that uh, the project is putting in place the basic foundations for ensuring that uh, the affected communities uh, will uh, improve their livelihoods. And the project itself has committed to doubling the household incomes uh, at the beginning of the fifth year after relocation. That's only in the Nakai Plateau. You can see from our report as well just how remote this area is. Um, you're saying that you're moving in the right direction, that people are going to start um, uh, making cash crops. But where, for example, would cash crops be sold in this, as we saw, remote area? Where will villagers, water buffalo, find food? What happens if the community forest is illegally logged? Uh, we recognize that this is a remote part of the country. Markets have to be developed. But then again, if you look at uh, Nakai, it's only an hour and a half away from the Thai border. So essentially, that market could easily be developed. And uh, uh, if uh, there is excess or surplus food supply, I mean, uh, vegetables or uh, crash crops or rice available, it could also be easily exported to Thailand as well as to Vietnam. But I believe there's a lot that will be needed for domestic consumption itself. So we do recognize uh, that markets uh, at this point is a challenge. And that's why we are uh, working with the government to put in place a proper marketing system. And uh, the infrastructure that's uh, now available in terms of improved connectivity and uh, between Thailand and uh, this particular area where the project is located and with Vietnam uh, provides for the expansion of markets. All right, Mr. Ilang Govan, thank you for that input. I can see Carl Middleton is longing to get in there uh, and uh, put in his uh, two pennies worth, but we're going to have to take a short break for the time being. When we come back, we will look further at the issue of dams in Laos. Stay with One on One East.